In this video, we're going to go ahead and we are going to start learning about classes. Uh, this video is split up into actually two videos. Um, both of them are going to be about classes. Uh, we're not going to get into things like inheritance or polymorphism in these videos. Those will be their own separate future videos. Um, these two videos will just focus on classes. So let's go and get started with the first half. Classes are the bread and butter, the very core of what object-oriented programming is. A class is a blueprint of an object. Think of a motor vehicle, like a car. Traditionally speaking, a motor vehicle is made up of the same components, has the same functionality, and is generally just a modified version from vehicle to vehicle. A, a car, a truck, um, a semi, uh, a train, okay, they all basically operate under the same mechanics, uh, wheels, an engine, things like that. So classes are templates for instances of objects. If I was a car manufacturer, I'd have a blueprint of what my car looks like, what it does. Um, I'd then use that blueprint to build many real-life copies of the car that were represented by the blueprint. That's what a class is, a blueprint. And that's what you can do with a class, create many copies of an object using that class. Yes, there are other things you can do with classes, but at, at its core, when it comes to object-oriented programming, this is what we're talking about. These copies of classes, of these blueprints, are called instances. Instancing an object means bringing into existence a standalone copy of that object, of that blueprint. In C Sharp, you define a class using the class keyword. Notice that I define the class within the same namespace okay, as the rest of my program, but outside of any other classes. Okay. Here's the program class, the default class that comes built into um, a C Sharp console application, and here's my class. They're both inside of namespace classes, but they're separate from one another. Doing it this way, this affects the new class's scope and allows the entirety of my program, so long as it exists within the namespace classes, right, as long as they're under the name, same namespace, to view and create instances of my new object. Now, with a class defined, I could start instantiating instances of that class. Classes are like any other data type. Okay? You're creating a user-defined data type. There. In this case, they're a reference type. Now to create a standalone instance of a vehicle class, I would define the data type. Okay? The data type is vehicle. I would then go ahead and give the variable a name, like v. And then I would set it equal to a new instance of the class. So in short, I'm saying give me a new copy, okay? a new copy of the blueprint, and store it in this variable that was designed to hold copies of that blueprint. That right there is how you define a class, and here's how you define an instance of it and actually instantiate it. Now, objects are more than just nicely named data types. They can contain properties and functionality in the form of methods. For example, a vehicle may have a property called num tires. Well, uh, that is an integer. So int num tires. It may also have a boolean as to whether or not it is a functioning vehicle. Right? Bool is running. Let's say that by default I want my vehicles to be assumed to have four tires and be fully operational. I would go ahead and say it num tires equals four and bool is running equals true. Okay? So now when I create an instance of vehicle, all the vehicles have these two properties and they are assigned these values. Okay? Now right now, I'm not trying to modify those in any way. There's no way to modify them. So every vehicle that I instantiate will have the same values here. Um, now, 
by default, like throughout most of C-sharp, um, properties and methods are implicitly private. I'm not saying that this is a public or private variable. That means that it is implicitly private. Okay? It's automatically assumed to be private. If I want it to be public, I have to go ahead and explicitly say that it is a publicly accessible variable. This right here would go ahead and allow me to go up and say, hey, let's take the new instance of vehicle that I created, and I could do V dot, I want to change how many tires V has. And I can say V dot num tires equals 10. Okay. And now this copy of vehicle, the V variable, is a vehicle that has 10 tires and is running. Now, classes can also contain functionality through methods, like I said. Um, like methods in other parts of your code, these methods have the same level of functionality, uh, the same access to uh, different parts of C-sharp. It's just that you have created your own data type to make use of that functionality, define your own functionality, and define your own properties. Uh, let's go ahead and let's create an example of a function here. I'm going to do public void rev engine and I'm going to make it so that rev engine just goes ahead and print something to the screen so that we can see it in action right. see right here I've got public void rev engine console.write line it just prints room to the screen a lot let's go ahead and let's go up here to our main method and let's say v dot rev engine we're going to call the method that is part of V. It's public, so up here we can access Rev Engine. And if I go and run this code, it should print vroom vroom to the screen and wait for me to press enter to close. Okay, printed vroom vroom to the screen, and I press enter and it closes. Now, something to go ahead and look at here is how I've gone ahead and defined vehicle. Okay. Now, I went and I said create a vehicle, and it automatically had access to these. It had these properties with these values. It had um, right here this method attached to it. That's it. I went ahead and let it assume its defaults. What I could have done is instead could have said, let's go ahead and let me get rid of this. Let's create a new instance of vehicle, and let's, at the same time, for any of the public properties that I want to modify, modify them. So instead of just putting my semicolon after new vehicle, I could say new vehicle, and then in curly braces, and it will pop up with all of the publicly accessible properties that this object has. Some tires 10, and is running equals false. Um, I do not need to go ahead and modify all of the public properties. I could just say, hey, I want to modify num tires so that num tires is assigned 10 with this new vehicle I've created. Now I don't have to say on a separate line v num tires equals 10. It's already been done when I instantiated the object. Now all classes also have another way to go ahead um, and do some basic setup and some functionality when you first create it. And that's using what's called a constructor. All classes have a constructor whether you know it or not. For user-defined classes, the constructor is implicitly included by default. Explicitly the write, writing the constructor would look something like this. This right here is a constructor. The constructor has the same it's a, basically it looks like a method that is the same name as the class itself. Notice it's public. I don't have to say whether or not it returns anything. It technically shouldn't return anything in most cases. Uh, it doesn't have to return anything, nor do I have to specify that it's void. I can just say class vehicle, public vehicle. Now, when an instance of an object is instantiated, so right here when I say new vehicle, Okay. The constructor is automatically called that one time and that one time only. 
That's what these little open close parentheses here are. They're saying, hey, call the vehicle constructor method. You have to call the constructor method when creating an instance of a class. And it happens automatically because of because of this structure right here, saying new vehicle with the parentheses. This is non-negotiable. This is just the syntax of C sharp. So when I go ahead and I call new vehicle, at that point, the constructor method will be called. Let's go ahead and let's just put something here. Comes to the right line. I am a new vehicle. Go ahead and save this and then run it. And it should print I am a new vehicle to the screen. And then it printed the room room. Right? Now I'm a new vehicle and then room room. The new vehicle is because I created an instance of vehicle. So it called its constructor method at that point. We then later on said explicitly, hey, take the vehicle I created and call the rev engine method, which is why vroom vroom prints to the screen. Constructors are called when an object is instantiated, and only then. Methods can be called at will. Uh, one other thing that it, I want to go ahead and look at here, and we'll talk about this more in the next video, is that with a constructor, you can go ahead and you can say that you want a constructor to have parameters. Right? Let's say I want int number of tires. And I'm going to give it a, um, a default of 4. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of me assigning the default here on num tires when I go ahead and declare the variable. And I'm going to go ahead and underneath that console I write line say this dot num tires equals number of tires. So I'm saying refer to myself to the instance of the object that I am. If I am a vehicle stored in V. So for V's num tires variable, assign number of tires. Now, I have a default of four. If I were to go ahead and say vehicle VV equals new vehicle, open close parentheses, you're going to see it says, hey, this method, this constructor method, wants you to pass it an int. If you don't pass it an int, it will just default to the value of four. I could say pass it 10. Hmm. These two examples here effectively do the same thing. Okay. They both will go ahead and at the time an instance of vehicle is created, I am setting the num tires variable on that vehicle to 10. And just two different ways you can go ahead and see this work. And, and that about does it for this video.